EdBrew's immigration as expert, uh, Bobby Ahn, is chief operating officer at Immigratus, which provides support for visa immigration processes. And of course, this in the realm of changes in right. the immigration process. And, and it's become much tougher in the aftermath of 9-11. Let's talk about the impact on folks wanting to come to America. Absolutely. It's become impossible at worst and improbable at best. 9-11 um, completely changed the face of immigration, of course. Uh, people who were routinely getting even visas are now being turned away. People who are in the United States who may have overstayed either, either inadvertently or some intentionally are now being tracked and deported, removed. So it's a drastic change. I mean, as you know, even the, uh, the immigration agency that used to handle um, immigration petitions mm -hmm. completely re-geared and retooled. A new agency was formed, Department of Homeland Security right. instead of INS and a, a enforcement arm was also formed, which was ICE. So absolutely drastic changes after 9-11. So are you saying that INS doesn't exist anymore? That's, that's correct. That They're called exist. the legacy INS. Now it's called USCIS. Well, you know, I think that there are some misconceptions out there. When you think of immigration, a lot of times you think South to Mexico with a lot of illegal absolutely. immigrants. But what you're finding, what, what is a fact out there is there are a lot of people, particularly from China, right. trying to immigrate to the United States. Right. And we have very tight restrictions. So can you talk about some of those changes? Absolutely. I mean, immigration has this uh, stereotype where the, the mass public thinks it's only about the people who are illegally coming across the right. border. But there are people who are legitimate applicants, who have skills, who have education that want to come to the United States. But because there are restrictions in laws, and also because there's too many people coming from a certain region, they put a, a, uh, a backlog. So for instance, people coming in from China, India, Philippines, and Mexico as well, mm -hmm. because there are so many applicants from those countries. So it's a quota, they really. have to Yes, okay. they have to wait in line. And, and we should mention, you know, we have this image of the, the Mexican uh, illegal immigrant, but in fact, we, at one point, we had more immigrants coming from Canada. That's absolutely than we true. Did from I Mexico. think they are Canadians. Are I think are the number one immigrants to the United States because they're the near border, as they call it. That's mm -hmm. absolutely correct. Well, let's talk about some of the issues confronting challenges confronting students. Yeah. Uh, uh, now we have the, something called the Dream Act. Absolutely. Explain what that's about. Dream Act is uh, it's an acronym for mm -hmm. Development, Relief, and it's education, education for alien, for alien minorities. minorities. So these are children that were brought across the border or came in illegally with a parent when they were minors. And obviously they had no choice, right? There were children that were brought here. And now they're here illegally, wanting to go to school. And in certain states, they're allowed to go to public schools until they're in high school. But situations change. So when they want to go to college, they're kind of at a, at a, a rock in a hard place where they can't become legitimate, right. they're illegal, they can't attend school because you have to have a social security number, um, you can't receive financial aid, and for certain individuals, you know, without financial aid, they can't go to school. Now there's legislation that would address that, but what about students versus entertainers, artists trying oh to come to the goodness. United States? Recently there was a uh, New York Times article also on two hip-hop artists trying to enter the United States from uh, West Africa. They had concert dates, they had sold out venues, and they were turned away at immigration because they had kidding. ties to the U.S. and they thought they were trying to immigrate. They were touring all over Europe, so all over Asia, but they the, couldn't come into the, the U.S. The laws have become entwined with so much red tape Absolutely. that people just simply trying to perform. Absolutely. Are caught up I, in and this. there's also a uh, pretty prominent off Broadway actress. Um, I don't know if you heard of Jennifer Lim. She's in uh, the, uh, Henry David Huang's uh, production. Mm -hmm. um, she was Yale educated, stayed in the United States most of her life, but when she wanted to work in the United States, she had to jump through hoops, immigration hoops, prove that she was one of the best in her field, called an, it's an, um, an artist visa, where you have to show you're an extraordinary alien in your field in order for you to be granted permanent residence and work in the U.S., so yeah. We've seen certainly some of this come out of, some of the challenges now come out of concerns for security. Right. But there is another effort that seems to come out of Americans pushback against yeah. immigration. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, it's the economy, right? And high unemployment. And the perception is they're coming to the US to take jobs away. Mm -hmm. So the, the political part of it is the politicians react and they make stricter laws trying to appease their constituents. And in the fallback is a lot of ways the, the immigrant population come to the US and they flourish. They create jobs, they create businesses, and it's completely the opposite of the image that's created by the, politi the politicizing of immigration. Well, we thank you for your insight and analysis. Absolutely. Good to it's have a you pleasure. here. Thank Good you very much.